Hey guys, welcome to The Finance Show with Joe. He's Joe, I'm just some schmo. And today we're going to talk about what jobs you actually need to be able to afford anything in Australia's capital cities, particularly Sydney. That's just because where we're from, aren't we? <laughs> um, this show's going to be ridiculous. Uh, I've just got to be honest and upfront. Um, <laughs> I kind of noticed over the last few months I've been working extra hard. Like I run my own small business. Mm. I run multiple small businesses. And um, I've really started to figure out why. And that's because I need to earn more money to be able to afford just living it's in everything. Australia. Yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't make sense to me. It, it's like just genuinely does not make sense to, to not to excel, to live in yeah. Australia. Yeah. You now need to be earning these exorbitant amounts of money just to be able to afford a home, to be able to buy groceries. <laughs> yeah. And we, and we have figures for this. The ABC just released a, a study. Um, I'm not actually sure who ran the study. My bad. <laughs> but anyway, so like the numbers are as follows. I'm just going round it, to round it up or down. Sydney, you need $293,000. Canberra, $205,000. Melbourne, $190,000. Brisbane, $178,000. Adelaide, $164,000. Hobart, 149,000, Perth, 140,000, and Darwin, 124,000. That's ridiculous. Just <laughs> to be able to buy a home yeah. in these capital cities, <laughs> that is now the rate of affordability. And I'm moving to Newcastle. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> I'll do you one better. I'm moving to Yugoslavia. That doesn't even exist anymore. <laughs> how, do, how do we make it make sense? And- there's so many trends and there's so many reasons why the housing affordability has gone up or the income needed to afford a house has gone up. Yeah, I've seen it's widely accepted that it's just a supply and demand issue. But it's not. It's not just It's that. not just supply and demand because we also have interest rates that are contributing mm. quite heavily into this. Previously in, let's say, 2018 when I was writing loans, if mm. somebody was on $80,000 a year, mm. they could borrow – five and a half, six times their annual income mm -hmm. to be able to afford a property. So yeah. if you're earning 80 grand, you'd be able to purchase something worth $480,000. Back in 2018, you could find two bedroom apartments mm -hmm. in Sydney for $480,000. Yep. That is becoming less and less prevalent. And the first issue we need to discuss is interest rates. Yeah. So interest rates have stayed at 6% and there's, even talks of the interest rates going up to steady inflation. Yes, I and I and I, I read, I read that apparently dropping interest rates won't fix the issue either, um, because apparently if we lower the interest rates further, it'll make things worse in the long run. And this is, uh, however, this is according to the Federal Bank of Dallas. Okay. So this is a U.S. thing, and they found that higher rates made life harder for home buyers, but affordability would have been worse because house prices would have gone up even further. But this is the issue, because interest rates go down. Hmm. There's a supply and demand. Mm -hmm. Okay, if interest rates go down, more people at the lower income brackets will be able to afford homes. Mm -hmm. At the same time, on the supply side, properties. Okay, mm. we're not supplying as many properties as we used to. Yep. So I think a stat came out the other day. Um, 100,000 new people came to Sydney or 100,000 new people came to Australia and only 10,000 new dwellings were approved. Do they expect 10 people to live in every dwelling? Like, <laughs> it, like, are we back in the old country and, you know, Yaya is in the kitchen, she's stomping, like, you know, she, she's cooking ready for an army? Like, pull, up, pull out your single bed from the cupboard and share it with your brother and sister. <laughs> oh, man, I've got a story from my dad. Dad grew up, he was an immigrant, and um, in his house they had one room and they had all the mattresses stacked up every single day in the corner and they'd pull those out and they'd sleep on them. The difference is he was living in a third world country. We mm. are an extremely developed country yeah. with some of the highest GDP in the world. Yeah. And because of the supply issue, we're not supplying enough housing. Mm. We're getting all this pushback. So I want to start with Darwin, Perth, Hobart, and Adelaide. Now, the cheapest on the list. The cheapest on the list. Now, I don't want to uh, degrade the people that live in these <laughs> capital cities because we need people to live in them. Uh, Perth is the Western Seaboard. It's the only major capital city on you know the Western side of Australia. And a lot of people don't know this, but the Western part of Australia is like 
double the size of continental Europe or something. Like it's gigantic. Oh, it's, it's absolutely massive. Yeah. There's, there's a reason why at one point they considered seceding and becoming their own country. Yeah, it's oh, <laughs> it's not one point. That happens all the time. WA <laughs> is like, nah, we're going to become an, our own republic until iron ore drops in price and all of a sudden it's like, hey, Sydney, uh, you know that finance you do? We need, we need a little bit of that. Um, all that education you sell. That's exactly right. But um, WA, these states, these mm. these major capital cities, they are needed because yeah, no, not absolutely. everyone is working as a finance professional. No one, mm. Not everyone is working as a solicitor. Uh, people want to work in the mines. People love manual labor. Everybody, not, not, me. <laughs> not me. But yeah. you see what I mean? So we need people to live there. But even in those capital cities, so I'm just going to list them here. In Darwin, 124000 $337 just to live in Darwin. To me, that is absolutely insane. For six months of the mm. year, living in Darwin is torture. It's torture. <laughs> it's flooding. It's raining all the time. It's humid. Yeah. You don't know what's in the water, what's going to kill you. Like, you know when- uh, well, We know. It's they're called crocodiles. <laughs> yeah. No, but you know when um, Americans always love making fun of Australia or everything's coming to kill you? That's Darwin. That's yeah. just Darwin, okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In Darwin right now, it's one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars to be able to afford a home. Yeah, that doesn't make sense to me because Darwin also has the largest amount of Indigenous Australians. Yeah, that's got to be rough too, just given the socio um, socio political reasons, like you know, so with the income and stuff like that. <laughs> just just on pure socioeconomics, yeah. the, the most people in Darwin can't afford a house. Yeah, the next on my list is Perth. Perth is at $140,313. At least there's a reason to live there, though. <laughs> we've got the mining towns. We've got the Western Seaboard. I don't know if you've seen Perth Tourism, how much money they're putting into it now. Yeah, it's a nice city. It looks nice. Yeah. Um, the sunsets. Uh, it's, there's reason to live in Perth, the mining especially. Yeah, that's, the, that's the, the biggest reason people live there. So the thing about Perth is Perth is probably the only city that you're going to be living in where you can have a blue-collar job. Mm. And I'm not saying self-employed, you're a plumber and you've got your own ABN. I'm talking blue-collar job, you are working mm. in mines, but you're working for someone else. Yeah. It's probably the only place where you can afford a property and at the same time, start making money on top of that. Like you're you're receiving a higher income because of it. I have friends that drive the trains in Perth. Mm -hmm. Those massive trains that contain all the all iron the ore and, the mineral, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, all that stuff. So, and they're on a bloody good wicket. Yeah, hundred percent. But there's absolutely nothing to do outside of that. Yeah. Um, they've got the Crown <laughs> Casino there, and that's all it is. And <laughs> as much as I love Perth and I love WA and I love you know all the natural beauty that it does have. Yeah, yeah. Why does it cost one hundred forty thousand dollars for people to live there? Yeah, that's that's kind of confusing, especially because um, Perth has been on the up and up in in recent years mm -hmm. as well. There's been a lot of investment into Perth for, for a variety of reasons. It's not just like oh, because there's mining, like you said, tourism and yeah. stuff like that. Um, yeah, no, it's interesting. I don't really understand. Would you Would you like to live there? If If your girlfriend turned to you and said, "Michael, I want to, I want us to." up and leave to Perth, would you be satisfied with the amount of culture, with the amount of things to do, with the amount of amenities mm. in that location for your particular lifestyle? Yeah. Would you be happy with that? It's a tough call because part of me is like, wants to be a little hermit and just never leave my house, okay. which in that sense, <laughs> yeah, I'd be fine with it. <laughs> in another sense though, I'm not like that every weekend and then then I'm going to run into issues in the long term. Yeah. And I do like to go do stuff, you know, go see gigs and stuff like that. And like musicians... I mean, the weekend just cancelled his Aussie leg of the tour, uh, of his tour. I had no idea. So the weekend just canned Australia. Just canned Australia. It's too expensive. They don't make enough money to do it. And that's it. They moved uh, on. I, I assume that's the case. I haven't really seen any reasons behind it. A lot, of, but it's not. You know, we got all the festivals and stuff going. It's just too expensive because regulation's so high. Which is honestly the same thing that's happening in the property market. That's exactly Re right. Too much regulation, uh, long uh, long building period, long approval periods. You know, all these kinds of things. It's the same thing that's affecting. Well, basically everything in Australia. <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, for me personally, if somebody said to me, hey, go move to Perth, mm. for me there's an abundance of opportunity. Mm. But I know my wife, okay? She's not going to be pleased. She's not going to be happy because she loves theatre. Oh. We don't even have enough of that in Sydney. Yeah, yeah. You're going to the Opera House and that's about it. Oh, and the State Theatre. Yeah. Th that's it. Yeah. That's it. The Sydney Lyric Theatre. And mm. We don't have much. We don't have uh, things to tap into. And when I look at Perth, I just go to myself, Okay, I understand why it's $140,000 to even live there. 
like, you know, there's a lot of mining towns, there's, you know, minimal builders, supply and demand is low. But for $141,000 a year, mm -hmm. what job are you going to find there outside of the mines? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure unless you, you know, run the casino. You're a journalist. <laughs> yeah. You're a copywriter. Yeah. Next on our list is Hobart. How much do you need to earn to live in Hobart? Almost 150. Almost 150. 148, 149. Do you know the reason why it's so expensive to live in Hobart or why property's gone up so much? Um, is that because more people are rocking up and, and less people, uh, less buildings are going up? I don't actually know for that, Hobart. Honestly, I kind of forget about Tasmania. That's a really good high level answer. Yeah. Like, you know, you're passing if we sat an exam. Okay, cool. <laughs> the high distinction answer is Hobart is considered a regional CBD. Oh, uh, yes, yes. We talked about this last week, actually. Yeah, We did. And because if you work five minutes outside of the regional CBD, you've considered to be doing your rural work. So mm. a lot of people that are coming to Australia to study just go to the University of Hobart or the University of Tasmania yeah. and they can apply for their permanent residency so much faster than if they move to Sydney, Melbourne or Brisbane. I, in contrast to Perth, I actually wouldn't mind living in Hobart. <laughs> Hobart's a little bit better compared to the previous two capital cities mm. that we discussed because Hobart's the food capital of Australia. You say that doesn't do anything for me, but I like the, I like the, the nature. <laughs> well, that might not do anything for you, but... Mm. Someone who's been to Hobart recently oh, yeah. with uh, their wife, mm. I see the investment that they've put into the into the mm. city, and they've invested a lot in the culture. Yeah. And the reason is it's a two hour ferry ride, I believe, or so from Melbourne to get to Hobart. Uh, don't quote me, guys. I'm not 100 percent sure, but you can drive to Melbourne, jump on one of the car ferries, yeah. and they'll drop you off at Hobart. And a lot of people from Victoria are taking advantage of this because yeah. Tasmania is the food capital. And Victorians, Melbourneites, what do they love most? They love their culture. Yeah. They love their food, their culinary people. They mm -hmm. love being able mm -hmm. to say to people, have you tried this restaurant? Have you gone and seen this? Mm -hmm. Their whole city is built upon it. Yeah. So Hobart's a little bit different. I would consider living in Hobart just because I really like the climate. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's my big thing. They've got the Southern Lights. They've got, um, yeah. they've got penguin migration. They've got so many little interesting things that I do enjoy. Mm. But in saying that, the amount to be able to live there, what jobs are you going to be able to take advantage of? Yeah, what kind of work is there in Hobart? I know there's, you know, your normal bits and pieces of work that every city has, but like broadly. It's minimal. Yeah. They don't have the professional services that mm. Melbourne and Sydney offer. You don't have, you know, your big four banks setting up their main offices in Hobart. Mm -hmm. You don't have your major solicitors or your major marketing companies setting up there. So yet again, you have to go into construction. Or you have to consider moving into a blue collar type of role to be able to afford a property in Hobart. Now, I just want to mention one thing yeah. just for everyone. This is household income on your own, looking to purchase a property. This also is you living just scraping by and without any credit cards, any hex debt or any car loans. So I think it's important to clarify that just to kind of show you how expensive it is. Because everyone I know has a credit card. Everyone I know has purchased a car previously on finance. <laughs> everyone I know has some sort of hex debt, especially if you want to be working in these kind of jobs or earning this if kind you, of income. If you want a white collar job, you just have to get an undergrad but, at a minimum. Like there's, there's no choice. There's no <laughs> choice. And then on top of all of that, everybody at one point or another has stuffed up in their life because we're not taught finance at school. No. So there's a good chance that you've had a personal loan too. Um, Hobart, the median house price... So this is the midpoint. What most people are expected to pay is $835,000. So you said it previously. How much income do you need to be earning? In Hobart? Yeah. $148,948. So you need to be on $150,000 a year, no credit cards, no car finance, nothing, to be able to afford an $835,000 home. Uh, we're going to add some graphic <laughs> overlays for anyone that's watching this on YouTube or TikTok. $835,000 homes... You're not getting much. What would you expect? Two bedroom? You're probably going to get a three bedroom house, mm. two, gar two car garage, but it's mm. going to be built 30 years ago. It's going to be something that's red brick. You're not getting something brand new, modern, mm. exciting. I and mind a red brick though. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, I'm desperate. <laughs> yeah. why, would you, why would you buy property? Unless you're looking to buy property to start making money and prepare for your financial future, mm. which not everybody has the mindset to do that. Yeah. I mean, I, I consider it just so it's like, um, 
mostly for retirement, honestly. And that's exactly it. Like if I can pay that off by the time I retire, fuck, at least I have some money when I have reti- when I retire, like the pension and my super and whatnot. No, that's another big thing. The pension is so shit now yeah. that what are you going to do when you retire? Eat one piece of lettuce a week? And yeah, you got to pay rent on top of that if you're still renting at that time. It's It's insane. Next suburb, Adelaide. Adelaide, you need to be earning. I would also call Adelaide a suburb. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I stuffed up. <laughs> I would call them that. Yeah. Sorry, next city <laughs> is Adelaide. <laughs> I like Adelaide personally. I've never been. I heard it's got good wine country though. Good wine. Pretty sure it's the capital of churches. Like there's a church on every other street. Yes, I have heard that. Yeah, uh, it's the church capital of Australia. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, they've got the beautiful wineries as well as mm-hmm. uh, in the northern parts of South Australia. Yeah. I'm certain. Yeah, it's uh, just north of Adelaide, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, and then you've got Glenelg. You've got the beautiful southern beaches. I've been told the beaches in Adelaide are the best in Australia. Hmm. Um, I don't know why. I could imagine it's the coldest water because it's just facing Antarctica. Like, let's go. You Makes know, sense. like yeah. <laughs> it's going to yeah. be freezing. <laughs> But to afford a house in Adelaide, you need to be on $163,000 a year. Mm. And the median house price is $926,000. Yet again, insanity. Because what job are you going to have that pays you $163,000 a year on your own? Mm. No, it's true. I think at least, at least Adelaide has got more going for it in terms of work than... Darwin, Perth, and Hobart. I, I, we talked about how Perth is, does have opportunities, but if you're in a specific sector. Yeah. Um, I think Adelaide is like an in-between, basically the east coast of Australia and everything else. They've got their own time zone, which is like my <laughs> little favorite fun fact about Adelaide. Just looking at Australia's time zone state by states, it makes me angry. <laughs> <laughs> but you look at Adelaide and you go to yourself – what roles can I go into? They've mm. got a fantastic law sector. I know quite mm. a lot of people that are lawyers and they reside in Adelaide. Well, there you go. You can buy a house in Adelaide if you're a lawyer. <laughs> Another thing is they are probably the best city for both positive gearing and capital growth at the exact same time. For our new listeners, positive gearing is when your rental income is outpacing your loan repayments and Capital gain or capital mm-hmm. appreciation is how much your property is growing by year by year. Mm-hmm. So Adelaide's probably the city if you want a mix of both, where Sydney is just capital growth, similar to Melbourne. Perth is positive gearing, but mm-hmm. Adelaide's the best mix that you can possibly find. But even looking at it, you have to really question mm-hmm. what is the government doing in regards to new dwellings? Because this is absurd that a I was almost called it a suburb again. A city like Adelaide. <laughs> <I> get it. <laughs> you need to be earning $163,000 just yeah. to be able to afford a house. Next on our list mm. is our first major capital city in Australia, and that is Brisbane. Yeah, $178,000. $924,000 median house price. Mm. So a little bit less than Adelaide, but the cost of living is higher in Brisbane as well. But you get a lot more. From living in Brisbane. Well, at least recently. There's a lot of investment going on in Brisbane because of the Olympics and whatnot. We, talk, we talked about this. I think there's the infrastructure projects for the trains. Yeah. They're finally getting a train grid. <laughs> Do they not have one? I've never been. 2024, the year of trains. <laughs> They're <laughs> getting some <laughs> new highways. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, fantastic weather year round. It's too hot. <laughs> it's too hot. <laughs> I'm, you know, the funniest thing about Brisbane is whenever I – have I've been introduced to people that move from Brisbane to Sydney. Mm. My first question is, how many jackets did you own? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they go, I had two jackets throughout the year. I would wear them in July and August. And that's it. And that is it. The rest of the time, I'm in shorts and T-shirts. My brother came down just a couple of weeks ago and he didn't, he didn't bring any jumpers or jackets because we're, we're in spring now. Yeah. Uh, no, it's autumn, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're in autumn now. And it was he was like, yeah, it's, it's fucking hot in, in Brisbane. Yep fucking freezing it was, <laughs> it was freezing we went to the hunter valley it didn't stop raining <laughs> he wasn't prepared was he? he was not prepared even <laughs> in the slightest <laughs> but um i can understand why brisbane has become a little bit more expensive mm-hmm. but even they have struggled to get developments approved or buildings approved so to get a da in brisbane or development approval is much faster than in sydney 
but to get the building approved itself is a longer process. So they have the Olympics coming up. They don't know if they're going to be able to house everyone for these Olympics or mm. have the necessary infrastructure by 2032. So I, I, have, I have a question about this, and this might be this might be a bit of a tangent, but why, why, uh, why do approvals take so long? Is it to prevent unplanned, like unplanned urban sprawl, or like, or is it from what are the reasons behind it? I don't really understand it. Is it literally just bureaucracy? And like all the paperwork that you have to do, I, do, I don't really get it. Because I don't think it's pr to prevent unplanned urban sprawl because I look at the new suburbs coming up in Sydney and <laughs> they're just plonked wherever. Surprisingly, it is it does have to do with the unplanned urban sprawl. That mm -hmm. is a big thing. They do want to make sure that everything is planned, everything yeah. it, you know works uh, seamlessly with each other. Mm -hmm. If you go to Oran Park now, yeah, Oran Park, and I'm just talking about New South Wales, not Brisbane right now, but yep. Oran Park is fantastically planned. Mm -hmm. Things are grids. Um, you know, you've got the town center and then you've got, uh, the houses built in a way that makes sense. Yeah. It's, is it, it's not like one of those, um, one of those developments where the houses are like literally like the roofs are touching next to each other in those new suburbs. Um, some parts S of it are, parts, but yeah. it's, uh, it's a lot more spread, but the reason is number one, we've got a lot more applications. Okay. Okay. We've got a high level of migration. People have started to figure out that mm. there's money in property development and construction in Australia. So they think to themselves, hey, why don't I get into that? I want a piece of that pie. Yeah. So you have a lot more people entering the market, believing that they can become developers as well. Mm -hmm. And then on the back of that, um, and I am going to smash them right now. I was thinking about being nice, but I'm not. Uh, council workers are lazy as mm -hmm. all hell. Um they work from 9.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Mm -hmm. There is no overtime. There is no, mm -hmm. um, you know, oh, I'm going to stay back and work. It is a ghost town as soon as they close the office. So you know when you've got a report that you've got to finish and it's 7 p.m. and you're like, I've got to smash this out. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, tomorrow's the deadline. I'm going to get in trouble for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah they don't have that. Like that. <laughs> they yeah, don't have that. Okay. <laughs> council doesn't have that. It's, so, so it's basically inefficiencies. I want to tell you how inefficient council is, okay? Okay. I have a particular friend, and I'm mm -hmm. not going to name drop here, but a particular friend that works in council, and they had their wisdom teeth re removed. Mm -hmm. Now, sick days on average in Australia is 10 sick days a year, yeah. 10 paid sick days, you know, which is pretty good. He was up to day 12 or so. Okay. And his manager- I'm just having his wisdom teeth taken right, out. Yeah. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. It gets better. <laughs> it gets better. So he- turns to his manager and he goes, hey, can I take a few more days off? Um, you know, I've had infections. I've had some issues. Mm -hmm. And he goes, yeah, of course. You could take from the pool. What do you mean the pool? Oh, they pull their sick days. No, 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 no. So everybody gets their own individual sick days. Yeah, yeah. And then on top of that, there's another pool of sick days that you can take from. Interesting. So he took another week off, completely paid, mm. and was able to, you know, function about his normal day. On the other side of that, mm. there are people that are waiting for these applications to get approved so that people can live in dwellings and they're just getting put on the back burner. Yeah, we'll get yeah, back yeah. to you when we get back to you. Is that normal? So basically, there's no one cracking the whip at, at the local level. There's that. You have to remember, it's all a lot of things are politics. So yeah, yeah, yeah. if someone turns around and says, I want 100% net zero, um, all my buses to be electric. Mm. There's feasibility that needs to be done on that. Yeah, 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 of course. Uh, buses, certain buses, like the electric buses, can only fit 55 people and the regular buses fit 80. Yeah, I'm yeah. just using rough numbers, right? So that means if you used a petrol-powered bus, you could have 30% more people on. Okay, fantastic. We're going to move all the buses from this to electric. Mm. If somebody stands up and says, but that doesn't make sense feasibly. This is how much more it's going to cost. This is how much mm. more it's going to cost in taxpayer money. That person in council is going to be told, hey, shut up. We need to get voted in. You uh, want to keep your job? We need to get voted in. Don't even mention it. Just let the election promise run its course. So, so it's po yeah, politics. There's so much politics involved in getting these applications approved, getting these permits done. Mm -hmm. And people don't want to lose their job. At the end of the day, people don't want to lose their job. They yeah. want to keep their livelihood. It sounds like a pretty cruisy job to me. And I guess, and I guess that's why the NIMBYs have so much sway as well. That's exactly they right. Wanna, yeah, they don't, they don't want to lose their jobs, and uh, they're the ones make kicking up a stink. 
And honestly, not everyone voting in local elections, is that compulsory in Australia as well? I believe it is, yeah. Okay. So these are genuine things that the local council needs to look at. If For everyone that doesn't know, a NIMBY is a not in my backyard. Uh, I have an apartment and I bought it two kilometers down the road from a pub. The pub is too loud at 1 p.m., uh, 1 a.m., not in my backyard, call up, make a complaint, all of a sudden the pub's been shut down. This has happened. And this has happened a lot. Yeah. And it just happened in a regional town as well. Yeah. Did you see that, did you see that headline? I saw that, I saw that headline and yeah. I'm just sitting there and I'm going to myself, this doesn't make sense, but a lot of it is political. And that's why um, a lot of these approvals don't get through in time to be able to cope mm. with this mass migration or be able to, to be able to cope yeah. with more supply in housing. If we had a higher supply in housing, they wouldn't cost so much. You wouldn't need as high yeah, of a yeah. wage, but we don't. The second reason why, and not to bore everyone out there, but they've changed the approval process because there were a lot of dodgy builders out there. Yeah. So previously I was saying so many people entered the market because they thought, hey, I could do this. I can make money. Yeah, but, it's a quick, but it was a get-rich-quick scheme. <laughs> we saw the mascot towers. We yeah. saw, um, you know, what was the other one? The Opal Tower. Things mm. were falling apart. Things yeah. were falling down. And but yeah, the craftsmanship was dodgy. There were cracks. So the buildings were essentially derelict and they were new. <laughs> so they put in all this extra, um, all these extra steps just to be able to get an approval. And that's why it's taking so much longer. Uh, and that's why there's so much less supply. The dodgy developers, you ruined it for everyone. <laughs> ruined it for everyone. Um, next suburb on the list is now Australia's biggest city. They overtook, new, they overtook new, uh, Sydney recently. <laughs> which I am personally offended by <laughs> because uh, I hate them. Um, Melbourne. Melbourne and Victoria, you now need to be earning $190,000 a year mm -hmm. to be able to afford a home in, uh, in your CBD and the median house price is $1.16 million. This is the only one I understand out of all of them. Yeah. Melbourne offers something. <laughs> Melbourne, Melbourne, it offers more than something. It offers plenty. M Melbourne's New York. Yeah. Melbourne has all the big... Law firms, they've got all the big banks. They've got mm -hmm. all the big money. They've got the PAYG jobs. You've got all the restaurants located in a hub. Mm. like A hub that's easily accessible. Easily accessible. They've got the tram lines. They've got- they coming from the airport. They've got it worked out. <laughs> but they do. They've got yeah. it worked out. Yeah. I even like their airport because it's out of the city. Because it's out of the city, you land in the airport and guess what? You can land at 3 a.m. as opposed to Sydney where we our airport- Landing times cut off at 11 a.m.? Uh, something like that. Because of noise, because of not in my backyard. Like, it just, it's just stupid. <laughs> Sydney is a nanny state. It's, it's, it's an absolute nanny state. But I understand why Melbourne is so expensive. But yet again, their weather is shit. So let's move on from there. Um, <laughs> this is the one that caught both of us by surprise. I am genuinely shocked. <laughs> Do you want to go? Canberra, $205,000 you need to earn to financially like live stress-free and buy a house. I can't believe it. Canberra. $205,000 is how much you need to be making. Now, I do understand where that salary comes from. A lot of the politicians make that sort of money. Oh, yeah, comfortably too. It's like 300000 I think, is their average. And you have no idea how much they comp. Like, oh, oh yeah, and, and with the lobbyists and stuff like that. From And this is on both sides of the aisle. Yeah. It doesn't matter. No, no, it doesn't matter. Like I, we saw the other day Adam Bant bloody flying around on a private jet and charging Australian taxpayers a million dollars. Let's go ahead, net zero greenies. But anyways, <laughs> so $205,000 to be able to afford a property of $950,000. So I'm not too sure if the median house prices are correct on this one. Yeah. or I, I'm not really sure where this number came from because it did shock us. I would have put it around the middle of the list. But I do understand why it's so expensive to live there because- all the politicians need to live there mm. and they're just beating each other out. Hey, I want that house. No, I want that house. And they're trying to stack on top of each other. And they're also not like permanent dwellings for them as well. Yeah. Because once they're, if they're not in office anymore, what the fuck are you going to live in Canberra for? That's exactly <laughs> right. So their development's a lot slower. But one thing I do want to note about Canberra, if you are considering living in Canberra because there is an opportunity for employment or there is mm. an opportunity for a job, you do have to start looking at the regional suburbs around it. Yeah. The regional yeah. cities. Goulburn is a fantastic option. You can be 35 minutes, 40 minutes away from Canberra CBD living in Goulburn, but your house prices are half what they are in Canberra. And you've got the big ramp, so. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but um, if, if your life is just about work, go home, Herman, mm. Goulburn is a fantastic option to be looking at. Mm. We've got the Mac Daddy. 
We've got the most expensive city in Australia to discuss now. Oh yeah. And I've I've got I've got ten minutes on this one. I've, I'm ready to hammer it. We're allowed to. It's our home. <laughs> so the median house price in Sydney is now one point six million dollars. Which was up. It was only 1.3, I want to say, just like a, a month or two ago. No, so it was back in December, it was $1.3 million. Like that mm. was the average. Yeah. To afford a home in Sydney on your own in order to be able to make repayments, live comfortably, mm. and just relax. Mm. Michael? <sighs> or do you want me to say it? No, no. I've got it. I'll take the boy. $293,578 a year to live, to buy a property and live comfortably without financial stress in Sydney. This is the most insane number I've ever heard. If, like, I, 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 I actually cannot believe that that is the income you need as a sole person to be able to afford just the median house in Sydney. The median, the midpoint. I'm not talking about Vaucluse. No. I'm not talking about... No. Point Piper. I'm not talking about Bellevue Hill. I am talking about not even Five Dock. Five Dock is double that price, $1.6 million now. I'm talking about, you know, Menai. I'm yeah. talking about Illawong. I'm talking about Alfred's Point. I'm talking about Padstow, Reevesby. I'm talking about like suburbs that are east of Bankstown. Yeah. Just for affordability. The median house price in Punchbowl is like $1.4 million. Punchbowl. Punchies, Punch, man. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Guildford is a million dollars to be able to afford. Uh, Parramatta is mm. over the million dollar mark, close to the $2 million mark. Yeah. It is insane how much money you now need to be earning to just afford a house in Sydney at $294,000. So Sydney is the home of the self-employed. Sydney is the place where if you want to afford a home, I'm not talking about an apartment. I'm just talking about a home. These are the four jobs. <laughs> Okay, I'm talking about you are paid an hourly wage and this is how much you earn. These are the four jobs you need to be gunning for in order to afford a home in Sydney. And, then, and it is only four jobs. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> the, the one that was one down was $275,000 a year salary. Okay. And it's just not enough apparently. <laughs> At number one, you are a doctor. You earn $305,000 a year. Mm. I want to note that I have a lot of doctor friends that are clients of mine, and a lot of them do not earn $305,000 a year. So that is a doctor, and you are a specialist at the same time, not just a GP. No, yeah, it can't be GP. You are $305,000 a year. Yeah, PhD ain't going to cut it in Sydney. It's not. <laughs> the next on my list is an anesthesiologist. How many anesthesiologists do you know? $386,000 and $386,000 annual salary a year. Mm. So that's job number two. Job number three is a surgeon. These are the people that cut you up and fix you at $394,000. And the last one is my absolute favorite. Yeah, I don't know what this one means. <laughs> a judge. Because oh, I thought you were going to say finance dealer. <laughs> no, no, no. We'll get to finance dealer in a second. But a judge who earns $395,000 a year. Those are the four jobs wow. that you now need to be applying for, that you now need to be gunning for if you want to purchase a house in Sydney and live comfortably at the same time. That's being able to do whatever the hell you want to do with all your needs and wants. No, 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 no. That's not whatever the hell you want to do, need to do. No, no, no. This that, is like the, you're only spending 30% of your income yep. on uh, your mortgage repayments. That is you're, you're spending your money on your mortgage repayments you don't have a credit card. Mm -hmm. You don't have any cars on finance. You don't have uh, hex debt. You don't have any of that. That is how much you now need to now yeah. need to be able to afford a home in Greater Sydney. And I just look at these statistics and look at these four jobs. Number one, they're ninety eight percent dominated by males. Yeah. Number two, a lot of these jobs are who you know, not what you know. Especially a judge. Yeah, yeah. And I can't speak for the legal system myself. <laughs> no, well, legal system is definitely who you know. And I'm, yeah. And then <laughs> number three, you need 10 years of medical experience just to be able to qualify. That's not including all the study you have to do before that as well. No. And I just like, I just look at these statistics and we're not making these up. These, these, this report mm. was done by the University of Monarch. Like, 
So yeah, the, I, I I found the. I realized I did make notes about who made this, yep. who, who 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 got this report. It's the Parliamentary Library. It was commissioned by the Greens. The Greens didn't do it. They just asked someone to do it. Mm. So don't get political about it. <laughs> now get political. <laughs> so yeah, that's where it came from. So Parliamentary Library. So I just look at these statistics and I go to myself, how many how many surgeons do I know? Mm. None. I don't, yeah, I don't know. So how many anesthesiologists do I know? None. How many medical professionals do I know? Three, four, maybe mm. that are friends. And then how many judges do I know? Absolutely none. <laughs> so I sit there and I go to myself, who is Sydney for now? Yeah. And we need to fix something. We need to fix something about the housing affordability. We need to fix something about the supply and demand mm. because it's not fair. We have a population of over 7 million people in New South Wales alone. I don't actually know. What, it's what something- we're, we're at 27 mil nationwide. And we have another 500,000 people coming to Australia this year, which is going to be higher than that, mind you, because we had 100,000 in February alone, episode two. Um, mm-hmm. And then on top of that, we're approving eight to 10,000 dwellings a, a month. It, it We can't keep up. So mm. this podcast was basically about housing affordability and mm. what you need to be doing in order to be able to afford a home in Sydney. And here's my best advice. Number one, don't have any debt. Number two, marry someone. And so you can have a combined income to be able to purchase a property. And number three, either study hard or own your own business. Mm. Because unless you own your own business, you're not going to be able to afford a home in Sydney. And unless you really taper your expectations, you're not going to be able to find something. And number four, have parents that already own land. That's a very important thing as well. That's really the big thing right now. People in my generation of how they're buying properties, all of them have I mean, even myself, like I, it was literally an entire family effort. Like all three, all three of us, my siblings and I, which we still don't make up that two hundred ninety three thousand dollars a year <laughs> with three of us. Mm. All of us had to get involved for it to to make it happen. And it is and if you don't have access to that, what do you do? It is genuinely insane that these are the numbers now to be able to afford a home in Sydney. Um, I want to use Michael as a case study because I think this is a perfect example. So, can we use you as a case study for yeah, this? Yeah, go for it. Uh, Michael purchased a property in Quakers Hill Mm -hmm. along with his two siblings and their combined income together Mm -hmm. um, in order to be able to purchase this property. I think your loan was for about a million dollars. Something like that. Roughly like. And they didn't buy in Sydney. They bought in Quakers Hill, which is how far out of Sydney CBD? (sighs) Don't don't make me think about it. (laughs) 50 Uh, minutes? Yeah, I would. it was – with no traffic, it's probably like a 45-minute drive. Okay. With no traffic, a 45-minute drive. There's, there's always traffic. <laughs> there's always traffic. But just to be able to afford a home in Sydney, he and his two other siblings needed to combine their income. And guess what? When we initially submitted their loan, okay, St. George came back to us with nine questions to try and say these people shouldn't buy this property. And I'm like, are you insane? Combined income, everything together, not only should they, uh, can they afford the property, They can afford it with this much extra on top. Mm. And this is the problem with the system in Australia. This is the major issue that we have. The banking system Mm. still assesses your loan that interest rates are going to rise by another 3%. Oh, yeah. So your interest rate right now is about 6.29, I think, or 6.19 we got you at. I think it was 6.19, yeah. Okay, fantastic. Actually, I think it's 6.08. Fantastic rate for Michael and his family. Just going to put that one out there. Mm -hmm. Um, But even with that, even with his super low interest rate and everything, the St. George Bank still assesses his loan at 9.08%. Mm. And you match that with these super high property prices, who can afford a home in Sydney? And we highlighted it. A surgeon, an anesthesiologist, a medical professional, and a judge. So I guess I guess your parents were right. Be a doctor or a lawyer, otherwise you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Even lawyers are screwed. Yeah. All right. I want to thank you all for paying attention to the, this episode of the Fight Dance Show with Joe. Mm-hmm. As always, my name is Joe. That's some schmo. <laughs> I um, like the idea that I'll never be named in these episodes, even though I've been named many times. <laughs> and we will catch you on the next one. <laughs>